Some people in our society are considered as geniuses, prodigies, or even masterminds. Those are just a few words to describe people who are amazing at doing extremely challenging things. And of course, the way we define that is obviously by using IQ test. These are exams are used to test their general intelligence using a few key categories like working memory, fluid reasoning, verbal comprehension, and some other categories as well. Those categories are usually known to be the basic elements of a form of intelligence and they help acquire knowledge. And for the most part, IQ tests are amazing. Educators can use them to teach in a way that takes advantage of the cognitive strength of their struggling students while measures can be taken to put the young, gifted students in places where they can take advantage of their full potential instead of wasting years in elementary or high school. Despite those seemingly positive consequences of IQ tests, they have never totally really been accepted. In fact, they are quite controversial. And one of the reasons for that comes from the history of these tests. Because you see, IQ tests have been around since the 1900s. They were invented by this French guy, Alfred Benet. His goal was basically to create a sort of exam that would be used to analyze the cognitive abilities of young French students and use the result to potentially help them improve. And that was it. The test was supposed to be used as an improvement tool, one that could be used to see where students struggle the most and what type of help they specifically needed. But as with every type of test, people tend to compare themselves to see who's the best. I guess in this case, it's more about who's the smartest. And with all those people comparing themselves and the test being used by a very large amount of people, we ended up with this sort of chart that most people know about. It's called an IQ normal curve, and it simply shows that most people's intelligence is right around the center portion, smarter people are on the right, and I guess less smart people are on the left. But would it be amazing if all humans were in this right portion of the graph? If everybody was able to be as inventive and creative as these people? Well, that's exactly what some people who believed in eugenics back in the 1920s were thinking about. By the way, eugenics is the sort of belief that by managing human reproduction, we can increase the occurrence of heritable characteristic regarded as desirable. At least, that's how they define it. Basically, making better people out of the people that are already considered to be the best, using desirable characteristic, and essentially getting rid of others by preventing them to have kids. And those desirable characteristics aren't always what you'd expect, so here are a few that were considered back in the days. The person's height, their nose length, disorders like epilepsy, the person's race, and of course their IQ level. So having a high one was seen as a very great eugenic. So all those eugenic believers thought they could create a sort of optimal society by eliminating those who had bad eugenics. Like of course low IQ score, physical disabilities, two large noses, and similar characteristics. One of the ways they tried to achieve that optimal society was to use the law. And in 1924, in the state of Virginia, the Eugenical Sterilization Act was voted. To put it simply, it basically meant that people who didn't possess the desirable eugenics weren't allowed to propagate their own kind and menace the society, or just have kids. And of course, IQ tests were heavily used to determine if those people had an acceptable level of intelligence to be part of that optimal society. From 1924 to the 1980s, more than 7,000 people were forcibly sterilized under the act. Many other policies similar to the Sterilization Act were voted all around the world with the same goals, like the ones from British Columbia and Alberta in Canada, or the one from Nazi Germany. But obviously, a couple of years later, researchers started to notice how ineffective these policies were. Because even though IQ tests are really good at calculating problem-solving skills, they don't really take in consideration the background of the person. For example, if they're familiar with the language or if they even had a formal education. So the problem doesn't usually come from the tests themselves because they are frequently tweaked and updated to remove any bias. 
No, the problem comes from the reason why the tests are used in the first place. Because a single number shouldn't be used to determine someone's full potential. In fact, if you look at IQ levels of people a hundred years ago and compare them to the ones of people today, you will notice a massive difference. It's called the Flynn Effect named after James Flynn, the guy who sort of noticed it first. Now, that doesn't mean that people in the past were mentally retarded. It only means that today we have better tools that can help us be better at those tests. Education is probably the most important one. So the best way to properly use these IQ tests is probably to use them as an improvement tool to see where people struggle the most and help them improve. So thanks for watching the video, if you appreciate it, please consider subscribing.